Hello everyone, Nubkex here. Welcome back to Nub Raids. And in today's video, I want to revisit Artak, the previous login legendary champion before uh, Sun Wukong, who's coming next week. Um, but after this champ has been out for a while now, I want to come back and give you my updated best build for this champion. This is a champion who is the key for me on my account. Key. And this is as a content creator for this game. I've been playing for almost, I guess, three years now at this point. Uh, key for a pretty end game account for two hard mode dungeons and is even pretty good in Hydra as well. Uh, I will explain a couple of different variations you can do on this type of build as well uh, to sort of customize them for different areas. But our pre uh, primary focus here is going to be spider hard and even more importantly, ice golem hard, where this is literally the best champion in the game for ice golem hard, literally the best. Pretty crazy. Let's take a look. What is so good about Artak? Well, it's really his A3, A2. So A3 is an AoE HP burn. It's going to restore his max HP. He does destroy his max HP with his passive. It makes him a bit tankier. This isn't a huge deal. We're not going to play around it too much. Though the extra speed you will get here could potentially make it a bit easier to gear him for Spider. Uh, I'm not going to be using that for this particular build, but it's definitely something you could do if you're using a little less gear. And I'll show you how to take a look at that and start working it out as well in this video. But yeah, AoE burns. Then his A2 is an AoE that activates those burns and places decreased attack. His A1 is also an AoE that can extend burns. This is not too important, but hey, there it is. Now, interesting enough, you might have spotted this already. Soul Reap is the blessing to use. Uh, I wanted to actually hold off on making this video because we of course had that Artac uh, event and this is also sort of defined how we're building him, right? We have the Artac event where we could get the two, three, four, and five star souls for him. I followed my own advice and I got the three, four, and five star. I bought the one star in the shop and have been waiting and waiting and waiting <laughs> with enough essence for the two star to come back around. Hasn't happened yet. I can tell you right now to make this a perfect build for spider hard with these exact stats uh you will need soul reap with probably at least three star awakened but we'll see that in the run i'll explain it why is this so important you're looking at this and going soul reap gives you attack and crit damage i'll tell you in advance you don't need either of those for our attack he doesn't hit very hard and his damage scales off hp why do we want this well the reason is this execute 4%, 8%, and now if you got those souls from the Artak event, 14% um, HP threshold execute, that is absolutely massive. It's a game changer. On top of which, for Ice Golem in particular, um, it doesn't matter for Spider, but for Ice Golem, each level of Awakening, reducing the damage that you take is going to make it significantly easier to build this champion to survive because survivability is really the key in Ice Golem. But this is the best blessing to go for. The problem with uh, the other ones you might go for, Brimstone, this does not work well in Ice Golem because it can trigger the retaliation hits and that's going to wipe your run. Can't survive it, so you can't run that for Ice Golem and he is the best champion for that, so that makes it a no-go. Uh, I would say Cruelty is okay for Hydra because he's doing constant AoEs, decreasing their defense, so that's fine. You can run that but I'll tell you right now, Soul Reap is the better option for dungeons. So that is what you want to be running. Let's look at the build. What have we done? And we do have, by the way, this 100% gear removal cost. So you can rebuild like this. I think the key to making this work well is Stalwart or Defiant Gear. Reducing the damage he takes from AoE attacks, right? The Ice Golem hits very, very hard. Guess what? <laughs> Guess what? Reducing that damage by 30% makes a massive difference. And when you start stacking that with the Awakening for reduced damage, all this adds together and suddenly makes this champion hugely tanky and he can do it. Alternatives that you can do if you want to build him alternatively. Uh, if you want, and let me shout out, the idea for Soul Reap, by the way, came from, in my opinion, a very underrated content creator, which is Tyraku, Ray Shadow Legends. But for example, he is using Artak here with regeneration. So in a regen set, you can use him to solo lower stages of hard. So Ice Golem hard stage five. I think Spider hard, maybe stage five as well. So if you're happy doing a slightly lower stage and you want to solo it, regen set then is better. Now for me personally, that's not as worthwhile. I think especially nowadays with how the game is going with, let me see, where is it coming up? I think it's tomorrow, which is part of why I wanted to do this video 
as well. If it wants to load for me, there we go. Ice Golem turn attack, right? So the higher the stage and the fewer turns, the better. I think that's sort of the way the game is going to be going with these turn attack tournaments. Uh, so for me, you want to be, I personally want to be aiming for the higher levels, which is why I'm building Artac for stage 10 of the hard mode dungeons. Uh, but yeah, that build from Tyraku is a really good option if you want to do a, a lower stage, like stage five and still pretty good time, level up food champions as well. Might be a great option, especially if you don't have any stalwart or defiant gear. Um, if you're building him just for Hydra, what you would want, I would say probably Cursed Set is the best. 50% chance to place Hex. Everything he does is an AoE attack, so he becomes an amazing AoE Hexer. I think uh, Provoke Set is also excellent. Every time it's an AoE Provoke, so you don't need to target or anything. He's going to be provoking Head of Decay fairly frequently. That's a really good option too. If you want pure damage, uh, where is it? Reflex would be a pretty good budget option. Relentless is probably even better. Just extra turns, keeps his moves happening in sync, um, lets you get more, more extensions on the burns, which is nice too. So Relentless would be best for damage. So it's, well, Cursed would be best for damage if you don't have Hex, but Relentless is, is second best or best if you do have Hex already. Lots of options there. I just want to make that clear. In terms of the stats that we're going for, uh, if I bring this over onto the main screen, so I recommend using the Hell Hades stages tool, and you can go into like every area of the game. So if we look at Ice Golem stage 10 hard, what do we need? Well, <clears throat> we the boss is 240 speed. That's not too important to play around here. We're going to need 345 accuracy, okay? And you can adjust this, right? If you're going to be doing, I don't know, like we talked about, if you're doing stage five hard, uh, you only need, you need way less, right? You're going to need 270 accuracy. So much easier to build. So check out your stages tool and adjust accordingly. The other thing we're going to look at here is spider. And if we go to stage 10 hard, we do need to be faster than the spider who is 245 speed. So we need to beat that. You can actually be lower. And funny enough, lower speed can actually be helpful for ice golem. We don't need to be that fast for ice golem. We can actually drop below Maybe even go to like 220, 230, I think it'd work just fine. Uh, but in Spider, you might have bonus speed from your area bonuses. Um, and of course, you're going to get extra speed because we're going to be doing a double HP burn explosion comp. That's going to give you a bit of extra speed. So again, you can be below that 245 and still go before the Spider goes. Just keep increasing the speed until you hit that marker. All right, that's what we're going to be doing. Um, so yeah, we've got enough accuracy. Obviously, we've got the 345. I actually have a bit overkill. We've got, you know, somewhere around 222 probably more like 230 240 speed so you're still good for spider i've got 254 just to be super safe we're not using his passive here i've got plenty of gear you can go lower is what i'm saying if you're struggling on the gear then we have high hp and high defense this is really important to have both very high really as high as you can possibly go uh, they're the sort of priority um, because these will help you survive on Ice Golem. Again, if you have him 5-star Awakened, it's going to be easier. If you have Stalwart and Defiant, it's going to be easier. You can tweak it as you need. For the Masteries, we're mostly going through defensive Masteries. I haven't gone down for a bit of extra accuracy, just to make it easier. Uh, you, could, you could get him Iron Skin, get more defense if you wanted. That's totally, totally viable. Um, I, I could also mention, sorry, I should mention, uh, you could build him as well. We'll talk about this in Ice Golem. You can build him to resist uh, the Ice Golem, in which case you would need 435 resistance. You could run him with Oella. We'll talk about that. So including her thing. Oh, you know, let me actually pause the video. Let me work that out for you uh, right now. Oh, I haven't set it up to pause. Okay, well, we'll work it out live when we get there. Let me, let me just dive in and let me show this to you. But you've seen his build. Let's go in for one of the runs here. So Ice Golem, let's look at that first of all. Here we go. So stage 10. This is the composition I like to use. I'll show you the uh, stats on each of these champions here as well. Um, here we go. Lovely. Ice Golem hard. We've got Elva. This is, uh, I think it's including the stat bonuses. Elva's running super fast. Uh, you don't need her to be that fast. However, I will say you want her to be a good chunk faster than Artak because you want her to keep cleansing off the debuffs from the boss on him. So you need quite a big speed differential. This is why I'm saying you could drop Artax speed lower. You definitely want Elva faster than the boss. 
Definitely, she needs to be over 250 speed, but lots of speed. And again, lots of defenses. The more awakened she is, the better. You could also put her in Defiant and Stalwart gear, and then it's ridiculously easy. I have her in Stone Skin for Arena, which is not as good for the dungeon, but with these stats, you're totally good. Artak, he's coming in. These are his presets. El Excuse me, Hiccups Elva. These are her presets. Turn off the revive on the boss. Um, Archmage Helmet. No presets. Renegade, turn off on wave one and then reset on wave two and no presets. Seer, we just make sure she's not going to karma burn on the boss if she somehow survives. And uh, yeah, just doing this on the waves. Simple enough. Let's go. Uh, you can tweak these, of course. You could run a better reset champion. Um, you could use other... If you don't have a Seer, you could use other wave clear. Wait till you see the waves. This is what makes it so easy. Elva buffs up. Uh, Renegade does nothing. We AoE with Artak just because we can. We buff up with Archmage and Seer destroys them. Seer doesn't have crazy gear. She is in, I think, Savage gear. She's in decent gear, but not crazy. We have her A1 at the start. There's a chance she get the extra turn and we kill the wave straight away. Didn't happen. That's okay. It'll be a little bit slower. We get stuns from Archmage just in case some of them survive. But Seer destroys them and just fine. So you can use any other wave clear champions. The goal is for them to be squishy so that they die right here. Here we go. All of them will die, and Artak will survive. So you can see Artak, barely a dent in his health bar. Even if he gets crit, because he is built reasonably tanky, and because he is in the stalwart defiant gear, there's no way for him to be killed by this boss. He is just too tanky. This is an almost 100% team. It is not possible to get this team to absolutely 100%, right? The boss, he can trigger retaliation hit. When you pa pass certain, what is it, HP thresholds? I don't even remember. Um, 80, 60, 45, 30, 15% HP. Uh, he will retaliate. This will wipe you if it happens. And there's no way to avoid it happening very occasionally. Artak, his hits are AoE hits. He does damage to the boss. It is po He doesn't do much damage at all. He hits really weak. It's so weak. But it is possible that he will trigger retaliation. If that happens, you will die. You will fail. It is going to happen, but it's super rare. We're not running Warmaster and Artak. We don't have him built with any damage. He doesn't hit hard, so we are minimizing the chance. But with Artak, it's always going to be possible, but it's super, super rare. Uh, Elva is always going to attack a side add. Um, and yeah, it's really basically that simple. You could remove um, Retaliation Mastery from Artak as well. Maybe that'll make it a bit more consistent, but I didn't figure that it matters too much. He doesn't really get hit hard enough to trigger those much from the boss. But you can see it goes super smoothly. Boss is really low. The burns are activating and he's going to die. Now, this is where Soul Reap, see, kicked in right there. When we get him up to that five-star Soul Reap, instead of happening at 4%, he's going to execute the boss at 14%. And because all of the damage is coming from HP burns and Artak's AoE hits, the boss and the ad should all be pretty close together so we should execute the ads pretty much around the same time. It should all happen pretty much in sync. So Soul Reap is going to speed this run up a lot. And there you go. Nice, simple, consistent. Bada bing, bada boom, you got it done. Now, alternatives to Elva. If you do not have Elva, uh, who is just a top tier champion, I'm aware that she's like a, if you haven't played the game in ages, you get her now. It's this sort of battle pass for returning players. It's called like the revival pass or something like that. So she is... Uh, just amazing for this. Brilliant for Dragonheart as well. Cleansing, putting block debuffs, increased speed. You could see there in the run, she has to cleanse off the decreased defense and the heal reduction and stuff and, and block those with block debuffs. That's why we need a big speed differential. Probably at least 50 speed between her and Artak. Probably the more the better, honestly. Um, she's amazing. You can use Oella, and this is really interesting. So let's work it out live and hopefully I get it correct. So let's, let's get a notepad up here. Let's do it together so you know how to do this. So if we come over to run Oella, how does she work? So she's got no revive like Elva, uh, but we don't use Elva's revive. It doesn't matter. We're looking for healing and preventing the debuffs, okay? She is giving us increased resistance to prevent the debuffs. We need to build resistance for that. Then she does a ton of healing with her A2. She does healing with her passive as well. So she's going to heal loads and she gives resistance. So what we need to do is we come over. <clears throat> Ice Golem, this is the right stage. So we need to beat 435. 435 okay now what we're going to do is multiply that by 2 over 3 i'll just i'll do that in a calculator uh over i'll just do it in a, my my web thing over here on google 435 uh x so 2 over 3 
equals 290, right? This is uh, basically the 50% increased resistance coming in. So we only need two thirds of that, which is 290. So with 290, we can then 290, say 290 minus the 75 from the aura equals, uh, oh God, 215. <laughs> We're good. Matt's life is always hard. You're going to make a stupid mistake. I almost guarantee I'll make stupid mistakes all the time doing Matt's in these videos and uh, it, it all goes horribly wrong. So 215 resistance is what we need. Then you can minus area bonuses, right? Uh, that's important. Minus Great Hall, basically. Uh, Artak has got good baseline resistance. So it's going to be fairly easy to build him with enough resistance to do this. I think Safira from HH Gaming uses this exact build and that lets you use Awella. I think other alternative champions, I have not tried Demitha. Demitha might work because she puts out block damage and heals and then reduces debuffs. Bit skeptical, but there's maybe some potential. It would definitely work with Demitha if you built them with resistance, but you would have to build them uh, without the the uh, decrease. So it becomes much harder. You've got no resist or you'd have to build 435 resistance straight up, but it's pot uh, possible. I think another potential one is Wither the Crown. She does give you a resist aura that would help you build up enough, but she is cleansing debuffs and healing. And she also puts out increased defense, which is going to make you way tankier as well. And she's going to pump out continuous heals, leeches, and activate continuous heal. So Withier could also work. And she's got crazy base stats too. So she is also an option to keep you alive. There's probably others as well. Let me know if you have any. Personally, I use Elva because I have her and she's a ridiculously good champion. And why would you not use her? She's so OP uh, if you've got her. Um, so yeah, that's, that's how that works for Ice Golem. Nice and simple. For Hydra, it is worth noting. For Hydra, okay, with Artak, without War Master, without War Master, you're going to lose a lot of damage on Hydra, a few million at least. You could build him with War Master for this particular team. You will fail more in Ice Golem because War Master procs are much more likely to trigger the Ice Golem retaliation. But that might be worth it for you. For me, I'm actually not using Artak and Hydra right now, even though he's top tier. If you are using him, you might want to put War Master on him anyway. Maybe ditch the defense tree or ditch the support tree if you're having trouble staying alive. Go offense, defense if you're having trouble staying alive. Again, you could ditch Retribution and you could just take Cycle of Revenge um, instead, right? Um, it's up to you. If you're struggling on speed, you could give him Spirit Haste, right? If, I don't think you'd be struggling on speed, but something you could do. But you could send him down offense tree. Just fail some of those Ice Golem runs, but take the win there. Another thing you can consider for Ice Golem of course, is that for hard, uh, stage nine is spirit affinity, which is the weak affinity from Artak and Elva and Oella, who are all magic. That will make your survivability stats much easier. It'll also make, I presume, the accuracy requirements much easier too. So for example, the ice, uh, sorry, this is spider. Let's go to ice golem so we can see this. I'm trying to give you like kind of a definitive guide here. <laughs> so stage 10, the ice golem has 35,000 attack and, and this much. If we go to stage nine, should be a good bit easier. He's going to have 34. Okay, almost the same attack, but you do need slightly less accuracy, slightly less resistance. And because you're the better affinity, you take less damage. And also he can weak hit on top of that. So this will make it much easier. So it makes the same team should basically work. It'd be much, much easier to do. So there you go. Pretty nice. For a spider, this team or this Artak build works beautifully in spider. So this is the team. We want an AoE burner. And we want an AoE Exploder. Cold Heart, I'll just show it to you. I've shown this team before. But how it works, Cold Heart goes first. So we spawn in all the Spiderlings. Then we burn. Sissia explodes once. And I actually have Noose go. And then Artak goes last. All right, so there we go. AoE burns. We explode the burns once. Actually, this time Artak is faster. Never mind, sorry. Artak is faster than Newt, apparently. Uh, and then Newt will go in and finish them off. And bam, five turns, 15 seconds. If I'm not recording and I run at unlimited frames per second, we can go faster. I'll tell you right now, with one star, you saw Soul Reap proccing. With one star Soul Reap, this is not 100% consistent because we don't have any damage built on Artak. If we had damage built on Artak, I also don't have any real damage built on Drang. Right? If Artak does not kill enough Spiderlings, we don't do enough damage to kill the boss. So you could fix this in a couple of ways. You could build Sissy with damage. You could build Drang with damage. You could build Artak with more damage so that they'll actually kill the Spiderlings. Or alternatively, 
just with the HP burns, basically, uh, and then Soul Reap, you can kill them as well. So very simple, very straightforward. So yeah, again, Cold Heart goes first, or another Newt. Newt would be even better to go first, but I don't have mine fast enough. Nukes the boss at max HP, single target, spawns them in. We burn, we explode. You could use a different uh, exploder as well. If you use a different exploder, I actually don't think it matters because Sissia does place decreased defense and weaken, but all of the damage really is coming from HP burn explosion, which isn't going to scale off of that. It doesn't affect it. So Artax's raw damage is not really going to matter. Certainly if you have him, three or five star Soul Reap, I think it definitely doesn't matter. You could use any burn exploder in this position. The reason Drang, there's two best burners. Walking Tomb Drang is best option number one. Why? Burn that cannot be resisted. So there's zero chance of failure. Whereas other burns, you've got always a 3% chance of failure. If you don't burn them, it could fail. Other great option, Ignatius. AoE burn cannot be resisted. So you're looking for that. AoE burns can't be resisted. You want your burner to go second. You want a max HP nuker to go faster. What speeds do they need to be? Very simple with the speeds. You just need to go before the boss. As I mentioned, with Artak, he can actually probably be slower than the boss because his passive will make him faster. When your second burn exploder goes, it's going to jump kick Artak's speed. So Artak should be, he could be the slowest. He could be slower than Newt. Um, he could be the slowest. I'd say probably around 240 speed is probably what you need, but you can maybe go slower. I'm not 100% sure. I've gone higher just to be safe. You can experiment. Maybe somebody knows exactly how slow he could be and still take a turn. I think it will also depend on how fast your other champions are. Speed it gets a little bit weird in the game is what I'm trying to say. But you can experiment. You know this is the speed you're trying to reach. Um, so you can start cranking it up. And he should be able to go faster than the boss, even if he is a little bit slower, because of that passive, he's gaining speed. Like we're exploding, what, about 10 burns or something? 9, 10 burns? He's going to gain, what, 18 to 20 speed. Like a, a big chunk of bonus speed is going to help him cut in. Uh, a little bit so i guess it depends how quick your first burner burn exploder is but look i mean technically you just need to be faster than this boss and you just need each champion to be one speed faster than each other i'll show you the actual bills that i use here for this i've got them much faster than they need to be uh so for me uh, where are we we're, we're much too fast so newt is 255 speed again he only needs to be 245 he doesn't need to be this fast we're a bit faster our attack is a bit faster, 258. Again, he, he could be the slowest. Does not matter. He could be slower. Uh, Sissia goes before him. She's one speed faster. It's all you need. Drang, he's two speed faster. It's all you need. And then Coldheart is way faster. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know why she's this fast again. She just needs to be one speed faster than Drang. So you could literally have Artak be, I don't know, let's say let's say 245. Let's keep it simple. 245. Um, you could have Noose. 246, Sissia, 247, 248, 249. Boom. Done. Done. And obviously include, obviously, spider speed area bonuses in that as well. And you've got yourself a lovely 100% team. Like I said, you might need to build some damage on champions or Soul Reap will make our attack. It's a pity we didn't get a failed run here. Would have been nice to show it. Soul Reap will, will finish them off properly. The rest of these blessings uh, don't really matter. You could maybe run Cruelty on somebody that's going quickly to make it easy. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Soul Reap should do the trick. So, yep, here we go again. We just need to go faster than a spider. That's all that counts. Very simple. Very straightforward. Um, you can see Soul Reap is crucial there. If I didn't have Soul Reap, those spiders wouldn't have died. We wouldn't have made it uh, again. You get the gist, right? You get the gist. Um, there you go. That is my updated Artak build. This is how I would build him. Um... Yeah, this is how I'm how it's how I have built him. Not just how I would, how I actually have built him is MVP for both Spider Hard and Ice Golem Hard at the maximum levels at time of recording. That is just insane for a free champion. Slap him with Warmaster. Warmaster would make him a bit more even more consistent for Spider Hard. Uh worse for Ice Golem Hard, significantly better for Hydra. So that's up to you. Uh, like I said, the set for Hydra, uh, uh, we talked about Hydra sets for Spider, doesn't matter. For Ice Golem, really recommend Stalwart or Defiant. That's basically all you need to so know. In case you want to know the other sets in these champions, Noose is just that. Uh, he has regen, that does not matter one bit. I used to use him for soloing stuff. Uh, Sissia has those, and Coldheart has those. Um, Elva, Savage on her, random stuff on him. 
some speed on Renegade. Probably shield set would be best for Renegade. I try probably regear her. I just want her to be fast. Uh, but yeah, fairly reasonable. Well, I was gonna say budget. Let's not call them budget. Just good teams. Great teams. End game relevant for Artac. Hopefully it was helpful to you and you get the gist. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.